starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. You can't tie a tie. Why, any child can do it. Is that why you can? You just have to pretend to yourself that you're tying a shoelace. Oh, I can't tie shoelaces either. Oh, no, you don't, Jerry North. My wifely service has stopped right there. I'd like to challenge that. Couldn't we skip this party tonight? No, we could not. Betty Norman's been simply a lamb about helping me with my charity theatricals. Oh, now, we're not going to the home of that frustrated ex-actress. Oh, that's very unkind of you, Jerry. She's very talented and was a great actress in her day. Not according to Edwin Booth. You've become very sarcastic and cynical since you arranged to publish that book by Wellesley Dean. Dean is very wise and witty and shares my opinion of ex-actresses. Well, he's going to be there at the party tonight, though I can't think why. You two can go off in a corner and be wise and witty. Oh, now look what you've done to that tie. Well, if you want to garret me, why not use piano wire? You know, that was a favorite weapon of the commandos. Chip and off went ahead. That would save you from tying any more of my ties. Jerry North, you stall long enough. You finish dressing. We are going to the surprise birthday party for Betty Norman's husband tonight. Surprise party? Of all the infantile undertakings, turning out the lights, hiding behind sofas, and everybody screaming surprise like a pack of babbling banshees. How can her husband stand for it? He doesn't know about it. That's what makes it a surprise. <laughs> That's the first logical thing you've said tonight. What does he do for a living, poor fellow? He's a highly respected doctor. Now, that'll all change tonight. Zip, please. Are you uh, quite sure you won't your mind? No. I wouldn't disappoint Betty for anything. Besides, um, Pierce Duncan's going to be there. Pierce Duncan? I thought that uncured ham was dead. I've seen these old pictures on television twice. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> I love you very much. Well, then let's stay home. No. Sneaking in the servants. I wish I were dead. Quiet, Jerry North. You'll get your wish. And ask for Joe. Oh, it's you. Yes. This is my husband, Jerry. How do you do? How do you do? Is your husband in? No. Then why are we? Come in, some of the others are here. That's why I swam home. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, I think I leave. <laughs> Darling, these are the North. This is Edna Lawson. Hi. Here's Duncan. Uh, how do you do? This is North. I smell something burning, Jerry, and I think it's you. <laughs> I'm even glad to see you here, Dean. Oh, there are times when I undertake excursions into the, uh, shall we say, seamy side of life. <laughs> Permit me, Mrs. North. I'm the idiot who thought he was dead. There have been times when I wished he were. Attention, everyone. I want to tell you exactly how I've planned the surprise. Now, I've arranged with the switchboard downstairs to ring me the moment Leslie comes in the lobby. When the call comes in, I'll put out the light and we'll all hide. Where? I doubt if you have a closet to fit me. Anywhere, it doesn't matter. Behind sofas and things. Oh, well, if the lights are out, why do we have to hide? Because I'll put them on again when Leslie comes in. He thinks we're going to the theater tonight. I'm rather confused, Mr. Duncan. No one as beautiful as you must ever be confused about anything. Well, I didn't know whether one should bring a gift to someone one had never met before. There are many gifts I'd like to bring you, Mrs. North. We mustn't spoil the surprise. Is Zip Pierce taking good care of you, Pam? Uh, no, but I'd like to. <laughs> Tell us about your new play. Well, it uh, isn't a new play, really. It's the one I'm touring in. But I have been thinking of getting a new leading lady. Tell me, Mrs. Norman, has Pierce by chance spoken to you about replacing me? 
Yes? Thank you. The doctor is arriving. Oh, dear. Now, everybody, please remember exactly how I planned it. Oh, what was I supposed to do? Put on the record player. I'll do it, Mrs. Norman. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Danny, you see that the doctor goes right upstairs. Take him a drink. That'll keep him out of here. Yes, Miss Norman. Well, you'd better go on. Now, everybody, hide. Well, I must confess, I feel foolish crawling around behind a sofa. If you spoil my surprise, I'll kill you. We've been hiding for 20 minutes. Is he never going to come? That's why he's hiding. Oh. Why can't we change it to post office? Really? Are you nearly ready, darling? Be right down, yes. Don't find my pie. Hello, darling. Thanks for sending up a drink. I needed it. Hard day, darling. Oh, usual. Too many sick people who can't afford to see me and too many spoiled people who can. Oh. What's this play we're seeing tonight? Never mind about that. You sit right down here. We're going to have a nice glass of champagne. <laughs> Since when does my taking you to the theater call for champagne? Have you forgotten? It's your birthday. Surprise! Surprise! Oh, I'm very happy to be here. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'll give you my word. Where's Thank you. What, did Pierce come to? Right. Well, happens to everyone. I thought he was right here. Jerry, you're absolutely sure no one left this room from the time the body was discovered until I arrived with the medical examiner? Absolutely. There's sliding doors behind those curtains, and I closed and locked them. Then I locked the French doors and this door, and I didn't open them again until you knocked. How about that door? Well, it was hiding right behind the chair. I'm sure no one went in or out. Well, that knife must still be in this room, and I'll be darned if I know where. We've taken the whole place apart. I must say this is quite a surprise party. Was Duncan a close friend of yours, Doctor? Well, I'd hardly say that, Lieutenant. He was closer to my wife. They shared a common interest in the theater. I see. Any idea who might have done it, Mrs. Norman? Horrible. Horrible. Why would anyone want to do such a thing? I thought it made the party. You're a cruel, vicious man. Oh, nonsense. I just don't happen to agree with the theory that the sudden death of a man automatically improves his character. But who would have a motive to kill him? I'd say almost anyone who ever saw him act. <clears throat> now, according to where you were all hiding when the lights were out, you were... Where were you, Miss Lawson? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Bill, I was behind that chair, and Jerry was back here, closest to the body. Oh, thank you, darling. Well, actually, I was, shall we say, equidistant, and though I don't mourn his death, the actual act of murder involves just a little too much physical effort. You worked for him, didn't you? Yes, sir. Why'd you leave him? We had a little trouble, but the police cleared me. Didn't Duncan accuse you of trying to blackmail him with letters some foolish woman had sent him in the mail? Miss Lawson tells me that you resented Duncan's attention to your wife, Jerry. I did. Thank you, darling. But not to the point of killing him. Any jury in the country would have acquitted you if you had. Now, uh, Mrs. Norman, how definite were your plans to return to the theater? Poor Pierce and I had talked about it. Doctor, didn't you resent Duncan's attempt to break up your home? Quite naturally, I feel that a wife's place is at home with her husband. When we were married, I was under the impression she'd given up all thoughts of ever returning to the theater. Then you certainly had a motive. Yes, I suppose I did. However, there are five witnesses to the fact that I was out of the room when it happened. All right, you can all go home, but don't any of you try to leave town. My dear Lieutenant, should you be in Philadelphia tomorrow evening at approximately 8.30, a visit to the town hall will reveal my presence on the lecture platform. That's fine. And exactly at 8.35, you'll be behind bars. And that goes for the rest of you. 
Come on, Edna. I'll take you home. Thank you for a fascinating evening. Whatever you're planning for your next birthday. <laughs> I'll see you out. Excuse me, please. I'll get your things in a minute, Mr. Norton. Don't bother. I'll find them. Something, dear? No, no. What's the matter, darling? Are you ill? I'm afraid so. Uh, Gary! Gary! Yeah, what is it? Well, let me have a look at it. Just a minute, I want to get my bag. Betty, would you get me a cold cloth for my head? Certainly, darling. Jerry, the knife, I found it. Where? Right there on the boat. Don't touch it. The murderous prince must still be on it. My golly, you're right. We've got to tell Bill Wigan. Let's get out of here. Oh, I'm all right now. Really, I am. I, I, I just felt a little faint. Uh, we must be running along. Uh, and please, both of you, uh, don't let this bother you very much. Uh, good night, Doctor. Uh, I'll call you in the morning, Betty. Sorry, Thank you, darling. Uh, we'll find the way out. Good night. Uh, Lieutenant Wigan, please. Hello? Hello, Bill. We're in a phone booth just around the corner from Dr. Norman's apartment. Bill, we found the knife. But we both saw it. It was hidden in the ship's model on the bar. It was? Yes, and, and a drop of blood fell on my hand. What? I wiped it off with my handkerchief. Well, hold on to it. I'll get it to the lab. And if the type matches the blood of the body, that fixes the murder weapon. Now, you two go on home, and I'll call you from the Norman department. If I need you. Well, Doctor? I'm asking you, Lieutenant, to have the common decency to stop badgering me. I've told you I spent all afternoon in surgery and the whole morning in the charity clinic. I came home to dress and take my wife to the theater. I'd even forgotten it was my birthday. The killer didn't. He gave somebody a present of murder. I'm as much in the dark as you are. And I must say, I am a little surprised that you'd listen to the hysterical ravings of Mrs. North. Her type is very familiar to me. She swears she saw the knife. So does Jerry. Well, I can't help what they swear. Uh, please don't upset yourself. Lieutenant, my husband is operating very early in the morning. All right, all right. I apologize. But I just came back because Mrs. North swore to me that she saw the murder weapon stuck in the ship's model. She also fainted after you left. It's very possible she imagined all this while she was unconscious. Maybe. I wish to heaven she'd keep out of my murder cases. I wish we all had. Good night. Come to bed, darling. Jerry, he was tying his tie. Hmm? Who? What? Dr. Norman. He called down that he was tying his tie. How do you tie a ready-to-wear tie? It comes tied. You back on that again. Any child can do it. You've got ties on the brain. There's something fishy about that tie. Yes? Mrs. North is calling on two, Doctor. Mrs. North? Yes, Doctor. Yes, Mrs. North? I wonder if I might see you sometime today, Doctor. Uh, professionally, that is. I've been having these persistent headaches, and you remember my fainting in your apartment last night. What about your own physician, Mrs. North? Oh, dear, Dr. Breckenridge is on his vacation just now. And, and I'm nearly out of my mind. I'd be so grateful. Just a moment, please. Miss Collins? Yes, Doctor. What time is my next appointment? Two o'clock, Doctor. And, Doctor, don't forget you have a luncheon appointment at one o'clock. Oh, thank you. I can see you at 12.30. Oh, that's very kind of you, Doctor. I'll be there. Uh, goodbye.
Medical register? Can you tell me who's taking care of Dr. Breckenridge's patients while he's away? Dr. Breckenridge is not away. Oh, no, no, never mind, thank you. I'll get in touch with him myself. Miss Collins. Yes, Doctor. Would you mind going to lunch at 12 today? Come in, Mrs. Orr. Won't you sit down? Well, first of all, Doctor, I'd like to make an apology. I think perhaps one is due me. You mean about the knife? Well, that's exactly why I'm here. If I can have such illusions, it's perfectly clear that I need help, medical help. But it looks so real. You did it. Oh, yes, and, and Jerry saw it, too. Do you suppose he's as sick as I am? It's very likely a case of mutual hypnosis. You saw what you wanted to see. Your husband agreed with you because he's tied to you emotionally. Why, how clever you are, Doctor. Why, that's a brilliant analysis. Perhaps you had better call the lab and tell them that the blood on my handkerchief was an illusion, too. The lab? Yes. You see, when I reached for my bag on the bar, a drop of blood fell on the back of my hand. A completely imaginary drop of blood from an obviously hypnotized knife. I see. Is it any wonder that I have headaches, Doctor? No. Uh, no, it isn't. But I'm quite certain they'll go away. You need a rest, Mrs. North. A long rest. <laughs> In the meantime... Take these. Oh, thank you. I'll get you some water. I can't tell you how much you've helped me. I feel better already. Well, I'm very glad to have been of service, Mrs. North. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, Mrs. North. consider murder a joke. On the contrary, I find the spectacle that you are making of yourself, Lieutenant, most amusing. All right, now. There are people in this room with a motive strong enough to commit murder. Miss Lawson, jealousy, both personal and professional. Fear that Mrs. Norman might replace you in the company and possibly in Duncan's affections. I resent that, Lieutenant. Resent away. You're a natural for the jealous husband role. And perhaps I am. But jealousy would hardly make it possible for me to reach from an upstairs bedroom to down here behind a sofa. And you, Danny, you had a very strong motive, too. Fear of exposure as an accused blackmailer might have meant your job. Good servants are hard to find, Lieutenant. Why should I kill when jobs are plentiful? Jerry, where's Pam? Well, now, don't tell me you suspect her. Well, I'm getting worried. I haven't seen Pam since this morning. She made a mysterious phone call and then disappeared. Never mind, I'll get it. I do hope he comes back with the murderer, then I can be off to Philadelphia. Hello, everybody. 
Oh, Pam, where have you been? I've had the most fascinating day. I've been at the police laboratory watching them analyze things. What things? Oh, the usual things they have in labs, slides and smears and pills. Darling, have you been poking your nose where you shouldn't? On the contrary, where I should. I might as well go home. Yes, why don't we all go to Philadelphia? Or anyway, leave here. Just stay where you are. Surely you don't want to leave before finding out who the murderer is. And you know. Yes, I know. Betty, you remember when you were having us hide behind the chairs and the sofa and things before you turned out the light? Yes. Well, while the light was still on, the murderer looked in this room and saw that Pierce Duncan was hiding behind the sofa. The murderer? Yes. And then when you turned out the light, the murderer came in through that door. He looked around and saw that everyone's back was turned. Quietly crept to the sofa and plunged the knife in Pierce's back. Then he hid the knife in the ship's model on the bar. Then he sneaked out the door. Then he ran quickly upstairs, the same way he came back. Upstairs? Yes, and when you called up to him, he said that he was tying his tie. It was Leslie who called down. This is an outrage, Lieutenant. It was also an outrage when you gave me those pills, Doctor. That was merely a sedative. They have put me to sleep all right, permanently. I don't know what you're talking about, Pam, but what does that have to do with the murder? Well, it made me think. Made you... What? We've been fools, all of us. We all assumed that the doctor never came into this room until after the murder was committed. We were wrong. How wrong? But you all saw him come in. When we saw him, it was the second time he'd come into the room. And when he said that he was tying his tie, he was lying. He was wearing a ready-made tie, like this one. She's hysterical, Lieutenant. There's not a word of truth in what she says. Oh, but you're wrong, Doctor. The knife proves everything Pam says is right. The knife? Yes, Doctor. Congratulations, Pam. I had one of my men go through your bag earlier this morning while you were in surgery. What operation did you perform with this, Doctor? Murder? All right, I did it. I overheard them planning this party. I hated Pierce for what he was doing to my wife and our marriage. I came home and saw him here. I guess I went out of my mind. All right, Doctor. Well, Lieutenant, I hope you're satisfied. I've missed my train to Philadelphia. Pam, that milk ready? Yes, darling. Nice and hot. So you can sleep. I, uh, I don't think I'll drink it. Why not? Because I'm suddenly not interested in sleeping. Oh, no, you don't, Jerry North. Drink your milk. I won't. Very well, I will. Don't you dare. Well, anyway, I hope last night cured you of surprise parties. I wish we'd stayed home. Well, we're home now. It's nice having you all to myself, Mrs. North. Milk? Mind if I change that order to champagne? It just so happens I accidentally put a bottle on ice. I'll match it for who opens it. Yes, well, I always lose, so I might as well get it. And just what are you doing here? Well, don't be an idiot. You invited me. I did? Well, certainly. You told me to come in, no matter how late it was, and read you the manuscript of my new book. Oh, no. Chapter One. Surprise, darling.
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.